the environment that we've got at retail, and food service for that matter, but retail is fundamentally where a lot of the product ends up, is, is an interesting one right now. So it's very, uh, it's wonderful, there's value there, it's very confusing, and there's a lot of caveats that are there for us to fall into. There's, what we found over the course of the last few years with the companies that I've worked for is our customers are desperately trying to differentiate themselves and they're asking us to give them the cattle and the product that they want in different formats and different breeds, different quality grades. And what we've come to realize is that that doesn't fall to us, that falls to the people that supply us with the cattle. That the side of the business that we take care of, which is simply putting your animals in a box and selling them to retail, is not that glamorous. Nobody at the consumer end of the business really wants to know what we do. They don't. What they do want to know is what you guys do. They desperately want to understand where their food comes from. They're anxious to know what goes into the product. They want to know what it was fed. They want to know how the animals were handled. That's, that's what they're looking for today when they're headed to their grocery case, when they're headed to their meat case, is that understanding about how was the animal treated, how did it get to where it is now on my plate ready to eat. What we've come to realize from some of our key customers is finding that connection between the producers that supply us with cattle and the customers that buy our product and by extension the consumers that eat the beef is the real key. Not promoting ourselves but acting as... I was worried if I said something wrong there. <laughs> but, but finding a way for them to connect with yourselves. Finding a way for them to understand what's going on in our industry so that they aren't confused by some of the misinformation that's out there, whether it be with animal activist groups or whether it be with, uh, with uh, other uh, entities in the world today that are telling them different things about where their food comes from. So we've looked at all kinds of things. And one of the things that we found, especially in today's day and age, when we talk about marketing, and honestly, I was a salesperson. That's where I started out with, much like Brad, in many areas, I just wasn't good at it. And so that's where they moved me into marketing. The jury's still out of whether I'm good at that. Nevertheless, lately, let me see a show of hands of how many people have a Facebook page. The Facebook page? Anybody follow Twitter accounts? Follow different people on Twitter? That's a little bit more out there. LinkedIn is another good one. But Facebook is, is very prevalent. And although not all of us are on there, that's where a lot of the consumers are interacting and finding out information. Now what that does is rather than giving them access to broad-based understandings of different programs, they're actually coming directly to people like ourselves and asking questions through these mediums. Or they're just picking up the phone and contacting our Consumer Insights line. And they're saying, I'm at Giant Eagle here in Pennsylvania and I really want to know what the animals are fed so that when I buy this steak, I'm comfortable with what I'm eating. That's the level of interaction that they're starting to expect because to a degree, consumers have become spoiled with the information that they have access to. But it's not a bad thing because as we develop relationships with you all in this room and find ways to communicate your stories and how healthy and uh, exceptional the quality of the product is that you create, that reassures the people that are buying the food from our customers. Angus has been a big deal over the last number of years. That has been the granddaddy of driving value in terms of uh, breed. But there has been a huge proliferation of Angus. And although it still has value, it's slowly become more of a commodity element in its nature. One of the things that we're finding now is that people are as concerned with natural, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, and then what's the most recent thing is the angle on animal welfare. How is the animal treated? I want to feel comfortable as I buy this, this animal is treated well. We've got some great customers who are pursuing that. One of them is Whole Foods. 
and they're probably the best at promoting that side of the business, the hormone free, antibiotic free, and then pursuing what is a pretty aggressive campaign and educating their consumer on how the animals are treated. If you anybody been to a Whole Foods store? It is a retail wonderland. If you get a chance to go, please go. Just try not, maybe bring heart pills with you when you go to the meat counter and run into prices. You will be startled at how much people are willing to pay to feel good about what they're eating. And this is not a shrinking chain, this is not a flower that's going to wilt anytime soon. This is a growing, vibrant, uh, uh, adding stores company that is buying more and more product through suppliers they believe in, like ourselves, but the only reason that they believe in what we're doing, and this is the God's honest truth, is because we've put them in touch with producers like yourselves. And they see that we're doing business with the right people, and those right people are who are providing what our consumers want. And so they tell a true story, and they tell it very well, and then they ask a lot of money for the product. And what we hope that we're doing is we're allowing for that value to flow back through some of the systems that Brad talked about. How he buys cattle, gets he puts together, written buying programs to come back to you to do the hard work in developing the cattle, developing the animals. And that's the benefit that we see through the entire system.